We're all guilty of it. There are many times in our weekly life that we think that we're funny, that we are the attraction of that moment, and we've got a funny line to bring to the conversation. And then it falls flat. It's like, oh, no. Instead of making someone laugh, I've now offended someone. I have somebody at my essential job, a coworker, that likes to make a lot of sounds because he thinks it's funny. From out of nowhere, you'll hear, stop, you're hurting me. And I'm going, what, 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 And then you'll catch him laughing. And it's like, dude, you can't say stuff like that in public. Ow, you're hurting me? Because someone's going to believe that. But he thinks it's funny. How do you react when somebody does something around you where all of a sudden the air in your lungs is gone and you're going, I got to breathe. I can't believe you said that. Okay, so it took my mind off from the pressures of the everyday life, but you can't say that in public. But they do. And we do. Even in our own moments where we think we're about ready to slip something inside and someone says that wasn't funny. So the way that I try to get around that is to be the listener first. To be able to find out what's going on in the conversation and if, if I have something funny or maybe I assume I've got something funny, the first thing that I'll do is I set myself up with, I, I think I'm going to cross the line. Is everybody okay with that? Which we never did in terrestrial radio. Oh, hell no. What we did was there was a door that separated the sales department and the business side of radio. And we would tell people, when you open that door and you come on this side, we're going to say anything and everything and you will be offended. Now try that in the real world. <sighs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, it's Arrow. This is the choice. This is what I was writing while the sun was waking up on a brilliant new day. Today we're reading from August 25th, 2023. In prayer this morning, I spoke of how we keep our truer stories about life and all the experiences that we go through locked up inside a hope chest. I sat there for the longest time thinking, I don't think I used the right word. I wanted to make sure that I was using the right box. So I went to dictionary.com and they describe a hope chest as being a place where women prepared for marriage by collecting blankets, clothing, and other household items. My mother had a hope chest. It was made of cedar. It always smelled so incredibly beautiful. And yes, there were blankets in there. There were old photographs in there. There was so much stuff that my mother put in there that I always wondered, Mom, are you without hope? And she would never answer that question. But I do know that in this moment of now, when I spoke of a hope chest in prayer, that I used the wrong box. And then I stepped back and went, well, what kind of a box are we storing things in? Because we're keeping our truer experiences away from the real world. We're hiding behind the selfies that we're posting on social media. What box should I be talking about here? And sometimes I wonder if it's just one of those gigantic crates that you buy at Walmart. Plastic, put a lid on it, and now throw the box away. Put it someplace where somebody will find it one day. And when they do, I often wonder what do they think when they open that box, and will it even stink? One of the things that I agreed with myself on way back in the early part of my daily writing, I told myself, with your writing, you will not stuff it in a box. You will be open with your writing because I believe that being an open writer creates a conversation. If all my emotions are being tossed onto a page and then thrown into a box, how do you expect to have a real conversation with me? If I can't come out and say, hey, in my writing today, I spoke about that very subject and, and I did some research and, and this is this is what I found out. It creates conversation. Now, sometimes people don't agree with the conversations that I bring up and they sit there and give me that oddball look, but I go, hey, 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 I, th I think it's cool that you don't agree with what's going on because that's what having a human connection is all about. We don't have to fight about it. We don't have to agree with it. All we have to do is just have some sort of collaboration of thought. This way I can hear your side of the story. I've got my side of the story and somewhere in the middle, it all works. So I always ask people, when you write, don't hide. I call that a writer hider. And the reason being is because some of the greatest stories ever to be told are inside those boxes, locked up in my mother's hope chest. She's hoping that one day she'll be able to use it. Don't put things in a box. Be open with your conversation. We're doing the Swedish death cleaning. That means we're going through this house 
And anything and everything that other members of our family do not want, guess who gets it? We donate it or we take it to the dump. Leading a life of openness is very scary, but it's refreshing to have a conversation. I'm Arrow, and that's what I was writing while the sun was waking up on a brilliant new day.